Okay, so have you ever thought about how, first of all, how many of you feel you have a masculine energy? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you do too? I'm not sure. You're not sure, okay. How many of you feel you have a feminine energy? Okay, but it's interesting. She's very sure she has a masculine energy, but she's kind of not sure. Do you see how that has nothing to do with gender? I know. Has absolutely nothing to do with gender. So it's an energy, and I specifically use that word, energy, for that purpose. And do you feel that you have a feminine energy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the two of you are, are similar. Okay, are you familiar with the yin-yang? Yes. And just assume that this is the yang. And that's my yang. Okay. What does this mean? It, it has many meanings, but what does it mean in terms of energy, in terms of masculine and feminine? There's a balance. Like you have both. Yeah. Exactly. So you have both. Chi Chi, you do have a masculine side. And they, contrary to their belief, have a feminine side. Okay? So we are a mix of both. Now, what do you think makes you more masculine in terms of what you guys feel about yourselves or more feminine? Well, in my case, I just love doing men's jobs. Like, in the house, like when I used to live with my boyfriend, um, we had two chores to do. Do the laundry and fix the door, like the kandao. Uh -huh. You fix the door and you And I would tell him, you fold the laundry, I'm going to fix the door, and he got offended. He's like, I'm the man. You know, <laughs> but listen, I'm the man. The man. Yeah. I was like, no, I'll do what I want, and I want to do that. I don't want to fold laundry, and <laughs> among other things. Like, I'm always surrounded by guys. I don't like to be surrounded by girls. I feel more, I don't know, I feel more comfortable, you know, talking with guys. And I see, like, guys talking, like, you know, crazy stuff. And they're like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. And I'm like, why are you sorry? Like, we're just hanging out with friends. Like, I don't care who you've been with, what you do with them. We're friends. Like, just imagine me as a guy. Like, I don't care. Okay. And, like, and where did you learn that behavior? I guess, I guess my mom, she's always been like that too. Like she, like I mentioned, she had to be like the head of the house and she had to, when, for example, if, if, when I was little and I would get scared or something, one time the, the roof on our kitchen fell off in the middle of the night and I freaked out. What did she do? She just grabbed something and like went downstairs to see what was going on. And you know, usually that's what the man does, you know, protect the family and stuff. Okay, he so. says protect for the man, interesting. But I know what you mean by that, yeah. and you're not wrong. I just have it here as protector, continue. So I guess I always, I always saw myself that I wasn't gonna depend on a man, like I wanted to. Where wanted was your dad? In Cuba. We were living in England and my dad was. Okay, that was the time when you guys were separated. Okay, so in my theory, in the mother, father, child, just to give you a synopsis, because all of this ties, and I told you I was going to tell you over and over and over again, and of course the old videos are there if you want to watch. In my theory, we have a triangle. Every single one of us comes from a triangle, because we all come from mom and dad. We can guarantee that every single human being, even if they're born in a test tube, has a male and a female, has a mother and a father, has an egg and a sperm, right? We all agree on that. The nice thing is that in this theory, we can all agree on the beginning of the theory. We agree. Doesn't matter what, who and what and how they dressed and how they acted, we could say, okay, I had a mother and a father. Even if I never knew them or even if they died. And a product of that is the child. However, what tends to happen is that we have an alliance with the child. We have an alliance. Good morning. Good morning. We have an alliance with one of our parents. And we tend to have an alliance with the parent 
that is either more present, in your case, your mother was physically there. Sometimes we have the alliance with the parent that manipulates us the most because they're like, well, I'll buy you a bike and I'll buy you this and we go to the one that, or I'll just give you love and then the person wants, you know, the bike. So there's various reasons why we, we create alliance and I call this a wrong alliance because what happens is if you create a wrong alliance, this is mother-child. The child is supposed to be up here so that the child is a balance of both two. Here you are. The balance of male, female. And here's the child. That's the ideal. That never happens. Right. Every single human being, and today on your chart, you're going to see, did you bring your chart by any chance? Oh, it's possible. It's, uh, take a breath. <laughs> take a breath. We're just so relaxed today. No one's prepared. It's okay. Neither am I. <laughs> We're going to wing it, and we're going to make it. And there you are. You're the most prepared guy in the class. <laughs> How about that, James? <laughs> That's a change. There you go. You see? He came in. He thinks he's like, oh, shit. And it turns out that he's the only one that brought the paper. We never know. We never know. So we're just winging it. So ideally, the child is the balance. But we have a wrong alliance where for whatever reason we are in alliance with one parent mostly. Would you say that your son is most in alliance with you or your wife? With my wife. Okay, why? Uh, at first um, it was because she just bought him whatever the hell he wanted. Okay, because very whole, common. Because of the whole divorce thing. You know? Very common. And then My ex did that to my kids. And then um, now, uh, well, now that I'm getting settled in, now he's going to start living with me again and stuff. But this whole entire time, I'm okay. been with her. So. so he requires a retraining. So first, Julian? Yes. Is mother, father, mother, child. Now perhaps he's going to have a switch. And this is a good age for him to have a swap. Because then he's got the rest of his life to actually balance the masculine and the feminine energies. So I asked the girls before you got here if they felt that they were more masculine or if they had masculine or if they have feminine. Do you think you have masculine? Uh, it depends on the situation, but I think generally I think more feminine. Okay, okay. So that's what they're saying about themselves, that they're more masculine. And I say that because I'm not... Okay, well, whatever the reason you feel that, would you say that you had a stronger alliance with your mom than your dad? Absolutely. Okay, and that's oftentimes. My ex-husband, who is a hematologist oncologist, he's very homophobic. He used to tell, uh, like when he was younger, um, before we had kids, he used to say that all of the, he, he was a hematologist oncologist during the AIDS epidemic in the 80s. So a big percentage of his clients were AIDS clients and gay. So he would be like, all of them are gay. They're all gay because they don't have a strong father figure. They have a strong mother figure. That's a very general, limited explanation. But what we're experiencing is, that's a little erroneous, but what we're experiencing is this. So in, in his case, it's not rare to have a stronger alliance with mom and therefore feel because he, what he's trying to do is respect mom he's trying to honor mom in these and you're thinking well wait i was with my mom how does that work you look at the qualities of the person and oftentimes what happens is the parent that is not there is oftentimes idealized they're put on a pedestal and therefore, not only did your mother adopt masculine traits, because she had to go fix the roof or go beat up the burglar, you now have mom who's assumed the role of man, and on top of that, dad that's idolized because he's out of the picture and anything we don't have, we want. And now she, she wasn't sure if she had any feminine qualities, but she was sure that she had masculine ones. Okay, so the nice thing is that we can see this in our chart. Now, in your book, 
in chapter one, there's a chart of the theories. It's very important, and I say this over and over again, that you guys become familiar with theories. Because theories are going to be the crux of your practice. When a client comes in, depending on how you want to work with the client, you're going to use different theories. So for instance, here we have a feminist theory. Well, if you have a feminist, you work with femini feminist theories, that's the theory that you're working with. So functionalism, the family as an institution and how it functions to maintain its own needs and those of society. But I want to read to you what the book says in more detail. And for those women in the class, when I read this, I want to see if you vomit. <laughs> or if you're okay with it. You might be totally okay with this definition or with this theory. And that's okay. You're going to have different you're going to have different views. So why is theory important? Because your client is going to come in with different beliefs. And if you don't sort of understand the theory or their belief system, you might offend them. Structural function, functionalism. This is in relationship to marriage and family, to families, to masculine and feminine. And we're going to go into the chart. The structural functionalism theory, often shortened to functionalism, attempts to determine... Oh, shit. I have to get that. He's going to kill me. Okay, let me read this and then I'll call him back. Mm -hmm. The structural functionalism theory, shortened to functionalism, attempts to determine the structure, systems, functions, and equilibrium of social institution. In this case, the family. A popular theory in the 40s and 50s the focus is on how the family is organized, how it interacts with other social systems, the functions that the family serves, and how it is stabilizing force in a culture. And we could agree that the structure of the family is a stabilizer. We have seen and research has shown that when children are in stable families, we, and no matter what the dynamic, no matter what the definition, it could be a heterosexual, it could be a homosexual, it could be with one child, it could be with blended families, we see that when those family units are stronger, society is stabilized. For example, Parsons and Bales focused on the division of labor. This is the division of labor. She started with, I do man jobs and my boyfriend does girl jobs, noting the ways in which separate spheres for men and women contributed to the stability and functionality of families. The expressive roles and tasks, expressive, I'd say that, fell to women, whereas the instrumental roles fell to men, which contributed to smooth family functioning. Functionalists rarely note the tensions, conflicts, or political ideologies behind their ideas, which may explain why it has fallen out of favor. So if we're going to say women are in charge of X, <laughs> and Yala is like, oh, hell to the no. <laughs> and, and men are in charge of these instrumental things, are we offended now? Now you wouldn't use that sort of theory. Now. Maybe if you're dealing with a client that is more religious or more focused on, you know, even like an evangelical or a very structured family where there are very clear roles, concise. But you can understand how if you don't agree with that, but you have a client that is very traditional, how you might have to adapt to their way of being. Can you understand the importance of theory? I will say this. A hundred, a thousand times. You use the theory to meet your client so that you could bridge theory to practice and that's where you sometimes have to set aside your own things. If you're unable to set aside your own beliefs, you refer them out because you can offend or hurt the client. One second. I have to call my son, he's a financial <laughs>